Double Rhiner's Triad, Newlands Octaves, Mayors and Mendeleev's Periodic Table. Have you ever wondered how the modern periodic table of elements was developed? Hello, SciPals! I am Sir Senan Salubaiba, your science teacher for today. In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we are going to trace the development of the periodic table from observations based on similarities in properties of elements. We will describe how elements are organized in the modern periodic table. Furthermore, we will also use the periodic table to predict the chemical behavior of elements. Finally, we will appreciate the importance of predicting the chemical behavior of elements through the use of the periodic table. In the next few minutes, we will explore science for another ah moment. Remember that an element is a pure substance that is made from a single type of atom. They are the building blocks of all the rest of the matter in the world. Examples of elements include iron, oxygen, hydrogen, gold, and helium. An important number in an element is the atomic number. This is the number of protons in each atom. Each element has a unique atomic number. Each atom also possesses their atomic mass, which is the weighted average of all the isotopes of that element, in which the mass of each isotope is multiplied by the abundance of that particular isotope. With the discovery of different elements, scientists tried to organize them in a systematic and scientific manner. In 1789, French chemist Antoine Lavoisier tried grouping the elements as metals and non-metals. Forty years later, German physicist Johann Wolfgang Dobereiner observed similarities in physical and chemical properties of certain elements. He arranged them in groups of three, in increasing order of atomic weight and called them triads. Observing that some properties of the middle elements such as atomic mass and density approximated the average value of these properties in the other two in each triad. These are examples of elements which form triads based on their atomic mass. However, this arrangement failed to occupy other elements as more were discovered over the years. In 1863, John Newlands, an English chemist, proposed the law of octaves. He based his classification of elements on the fact that similar properties could be noted for every eight element when they are arranged in order of increasing atomic masses. This table shows elements grouped according to Newlands' law of octaves. Around 1869, two scientists determined a way to put the elements in order. Lothar Mayer, a German chemist, and Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist, both came up with periodic tables that showed how elements should be grouped. It is interesting to note that these two scientists did not personally know each other, yet they came up with the same conclusions. Both arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic mass while putting in groups those with similar properties. Both of them also left blank spaces in their tables, believing that these spaces would be filled later with elements yet to be discovered. These are the periodic tables proposed by Mayer and Mendeleev. Later, in 1914, Henry Mosley, an English physicist, developed the modern periodic law which states that the properties of elements vary periodically with atomic number. Ah! 
The modern periodic table organizes elements in such a way that information about them are easily revealed. Using the periodic table of elements, let's now familiarize ourselves on how elements are arranged. The horizontal rows or periods are arranged with increasing atomic numbers from left to right. There are seven horizontal rows or periods in the periodic table. For example, the elements lithium across neon form period 2. The vertical columns of the periodic table are called groups or families. They are the vertical columns with increasing atomic numbers from top to bottom. Let us identify the principal families of elements. Some groups have their special names. Group 1 is named as the alkaline metals. Group 2 as the alkaline earth metals. Group 17 as the halogens and group 18 as the noble gases. Group 13 to 16 are named based on the first element found in their families. Thus, group 16 is called the oxygen group. Let us see how elements are grouped into blocks or series in the periodic table. Group 3 to group 12 constitutes one block wherein elements in this block are referred as the transition elements. The lanthanides and actinides are a special series of elements but are also part of the transition block. They are also called the inner transition elements. Elements from the taller columns which are groups 1, 2, and 13 through 18 are called the representative elements of the main groups of the periodic table. These arrangements allows us to study systematically the way properties vary with the element's position in the table. Similarities and differences among the elements are easier to understand and remember. Ah! Elements of the periodic table are also grouped as metals, nonmetals, and metalloids or semi-metals. These elements are classified as metals, while these elements are classified as nonmetals. The majority of the elements on the left side of the table are metals. Examples of metals include iron, tin, sodium, and plutonium. Metals exhibit the following properties. Usually solid at room temperature, except mercury. Lustrous, good conductors of heat and electricity. Malleable, ductile, corrode or oxidize in air and seawater. Usually dense, except lithium, potassium, and sodium. May have a very high melting point and readily lose electrons. The nonmetals are confined to the right side of the table. The exception is hydrogen, the first element on the periodic table. At ordinary temperatures and pressures, hydrogen behaves as a nonmetal. Nonmetals exhibit very different properties from metals. Examples of nonmetals include oxygen, chlorine, and argon. Nonmetals display some or all of the following characteristics. Dull appearance, usually brittle, poor conductors of heat and electricity, usually less dense, usually low melting point of solids compared with metals, and tend to gain electrons in chemical reactions. A stair step line separates metals and nonmetals. The elements along the stair step line are the semi metals. Semi-metals have the appearance and some properties of a metal but behave like a non-metal in certain instances. The seven elements commonly regarded as semi-metals are boron, silicon, germanium, arsenic, antimony, tellurium, and polonium. Metalloids have some of the properties of metals and some non-metallic characteristics such as dull or shiny usually conduct heat and electricity, though not as well as metals, often make good semiconductor, often exist in several forms, often ductile, often malleable, and may gain or lose electrons in reactions. Ah! The periodic table of elements is a common sight in classrooms, campus hallways, and libraries but it is more than a tabular organization of pure substances. 
Scientists can use a table to analyze reactivity among elements, predict chemical reactions, understand trends and periodic properties among different elements, and speculate on the properties of those yet to be discovered. Ah! In this episode of Agham Alam Hub, we trace the development of the periodic table from observations based on similarities in properties of elements. In 1789, French chemist Antoine Lavoisier tried grouping the elements as metals and non-metals. In 1829, German physicist Johann Wolfgang Doberiner arranged the elements in groups of three in increasing order of atomic weight and called them triads. In 1863, John Newlands, an English chemist, proposed the law of octaves, in which similar properties could be noted for every eight element when they are arranged in order of increasing atomic masses. Around 1869, Lothar Mayer, a German chemist, and Dmitry Mendeleev, a Russian chemist, arranged the elements in order of increasing atomic mass while putting in groups those with similar properties. Later, in 1914, Henry Mosley, an English physicist, developed the modern periodic law which states that the properties of elements vary periodically with atomic number. We describe how elements are organized in the modern periodic table. The horizontal rows or periods are arranged with increasing atomic numbers from left to right. The vertical columns of the periodic table are called groups or families. Elements are also grouped into blocks or series, the transition elements, inner transition elements, and the representative elements or the main groups of the periodic table. We also use the periodic table to predict the chemical behavior of elements. The majority of the elements on the left side of the table are metals. Metals are usually solid at room temperature, lustrous, good conductors of heat and electricity, malleable, ductile, corrode or oxidize in air and seawater, usually dense, may have a very high melting point, and readily lose electrons. The nonmetals are confined to the right side of the table. Elements to the far right of the periodic table are nonmetals. Nonmetals display some or all of the following characteristics. Dull appearance, usually brittle, Poor conductors of heat and electricity, usually less dense, usually low melting point of solids compared with metals, and tend to gain electrons in chemical reactions. The elements along the stair step line are the semi-metals or metalloids. Semi-metals have the appearance and some properties of a metal but behave like a non-metal in certain instances. Metalloids have some of the properties of metals and some non-metallic characteristics and may gain or lose electrons in reactions. Periodic table was developed as a result of years of painstaking work by different experts. Its present form was a result of meticulous and thorough study by scientists. It is used to analyze reactivity among elements, predict chemical reactions, understand trends and periodic properties among different elements, and speculate on the properties of those yet to be discovered. Ah. That's all for today, Cypals. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. See you again next week for another Ah Moment. Only here in Agham Alam Hub, Palajan's SciTech Portal. Bye!